Good morning and welcome once again. Let me begin with a prayer. She a prayer of Moses originally. Let's pray. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. Father, we make that prayer our own now. Please, this morning, give us a fresh understanding and assurance of your love for us. Renew the joy of our salvation. And as we look ahead to the morning that is coming, the dawning of the new creation, when we will be completely and forever satisfied with your unfailing love, please strengthen that hope in us. For Jesus' sake. Amen. The Bible is a love story, the story of God's love for his people. And the picture God has given us to try and help us understand what that love is like is marriage. The Bible begins with a marriage, the marriage of Adam and Eve. But as we saw last week, actually, in Ephesians 5, that marriage was intended as a picture of something far better and more wonderful. The marriage with which the Bible ends, the marriage of Christ and his church. And that's what we're thinking about today as we continue to look at Revelation chapter 21. But before we turn there, let's read together uh, a bit of a psalm, Psalm 45. It's a psalm that looks ahead to that wedding day, the wedding of God's king, who in the psalm actually is addressed as God himself and his royal bride. Together, let's read these words. Your throne, O God, will last for ever and ever. A scepter of justice will be the scepter of your kingdom. Your, you love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore God, your God, has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. All your robes are fragrant with myrrh and aloes and cassia. From palaces adorned with ivory, the music of the strings makes you glad. Daughters of kings are among your honoured women. At your right hand is the royal bride in gold of a fear. Listen, daughter, and pay careful attention. Forget your people and your father's house. Let the king be enthralled by your beauty. Honour him, for he is your Lord. It's a lovely picture, isn't it, of a, a groom. In this case, a groom who is majestic and utterly righteous, absolutely good and glorious, and anointed with joy, the, the joyful anticipation of any groom on their wedding day, enthralled with the beauty of his bride. And it's a picture of what's in store, of what awaits us on that last day. Let me read from Revelation 21 now. We're just looking at half a verse today, but I'll read a couple of verses from the beginning of the chapter. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. If you were to say to a bride, she looks like a city, that probably wouldn't be heard as being particularly flattering. But when this city is said to look like a bride, it's saying something wonderful. For the city, as we saw yesterday, 
stands for God's people, the church. The moment we don't look all that great or beautiful. But on that last day, we will be dressed not in the, the shabby robes of our own righteousness, but beautifully dressed in the perfect robes that Christ has won for us, with not a single stain, all sin gone, all that spoils gone. And the Lord Jesus, as it were, will have eyes for no one else, like a groom seeing his his bride walking down the aisle towards him to begin a new life with him. So the Lord Jesus will see us as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. He, of course, has loved us from eternity, from before the creation of the world. It's a love that has been constant and unfailing. It's a love that is costly and sacrificial to win us as his bride. Of course, he had to lay down his life on the cross. He's proved and demonstrated his love for us. We know that, perhaps. But on that day, the wedding day of the Lamb, we shall properly know and enjoy that love forever. And that's what will make heaven heaven. Not simply finally being free from all that spoils life in the here and now. The pain, the suffering, the sin, the brokenness. Not simply being reunited at last with loved ones who've died in the Lord. No, much, much more wonderful will be being united with Christ forever. Loving him and being loved by him, our God and Saviour. A wedding day is a day of wonderful joy. And joy is what awaits us, the Bible says. One of my daughters is getting married later this year. And I don't think it's something she forgets very often. I'm sure it's in her thoughts most of the time. And it's something, of course, she's looking forward to greatly. But we have something, each of us, even more wonderful to look forward to. The preparations have all been taken care of. Jesus has done it all. It's all been paid for. Everything is ready. It's what Christ has been looking forward to from before each of us was born. We're going to have our song now. It's a great hymn about Christ's love for his church. Let's sing. The church's one foundation is Jesus Christ her Lord. She is his new creation. By water and the word From heaven he came and sought her To be his holy bride With his own blood he bought her And for her life he died
let's pray now together. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, that even now we are one with Christ, united to him, loved by him. But thank you too for this wonderful hope of one day fully knowing and enjoying that love, being united to the one who is the source of all life and love and joy and peace, seeing him. And thank you that when we see him, we shall be like him. All that makes us ugly will be gone. We don't make ourselves beautiful. It's all his work. But having this hope, may we purify ourselves just as he is pure. Help us to grow in our love for him and in our trust in his love for us more and more day by day. Amen. Let's join together now in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now may the love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. May the power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. And may the joy of the Lord Jesus fill your heart and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you today and remain with you always. Amen. 